Hi, Joe. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I've been looking forward to this moment. I get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, copywriting. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad you're as enthusiastic about this as I am. <laughs> um, I, I, am. You know, I, I wanted to say, first of all, thank you for agreeing to do this, to come on and talk to our community. Um, I've been a big fan of yours, as you know, for, for quite a while now. Oh. Um, big fan of your book, Hypnotic Writing, which I was talking about a bit today, one of my all-time favorites. Um, still got it on, on, our, on our bookshelf in the agency. <laughs> and like I was saying, I, you know, I managed to pester you every few years and you've always been kind enough to respond to me um, and you know, get involved and give me, give me the time of day. So I really appreciate that. You're a likable pest. You're easy to yeah. say. Oh, yes. thank you. Oh, you're, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so let's let's start with copywriting. Let's start with your journey. I know you've done a lot of things in your in your career. Um, right. in time. Let's start with how you started in in the world of copywriting. Well, I uh, I wanted to be an author since I was about sixteen years old. I knew that I wanted to write books, I wanted to write plays, I wanted to write novels, I wanted to write fiction. But I didn't know anything about copywriting. In my pursuit of trying to be a full-time author, there was a lot of struggle. I was homeless for a while, I was in poverty for a while, but I kept reading, I kept working on myself, I kept studying the art of writing, and along the way, I came across the word copywriting. And I remember thinking, what's that? I didn't know. And I learned about copywriting. I immediately got excited because A, here was a way to make money from writing. And B, there was a certain thrill in learning how to write a sales letter that would make a complete stranger send me money for something they hadn't seen yet. <laughs> and so I, I got very captivated and I started learning about copywriting and there were some early books like how to make money as a copywriter or secrets of a freelance writer, things like that. So I just, I evolved into it in my desperate search to learn how to make a living as a writer. Copywriter was my door that opened up to let me in to start making a little money from that aspect. Amazing. And so I suppose it's that the art of persuasion was something that really interested you, that really gripped you. I'm going to tell you, I still remember the moment where I had written a sales letter for a software program. This is way back in the late 80s, early 90s. And the software program was an old DOS program to tell you how dated it was. <laughs> and we didn't have uh, effective use of the internet. So I wrote a direct mail sales letter. I really worked on it. I really crafted it because I was excited, sincerely excited about the software which was kind of a pseudo and artificial intelligence program to help people write and speak. Mm. And so I, I rented a small mailing list. I barely had any money at all. I think I even borrowed the money, rented a list, wrote the sales letter, sent it out. And I went to my post office box a few days later. And I still remember turning the key, opening it up and there were envelopes and I started opening the envelopes and there were checks. And I went, Oh my God, this, this is the holy grail. This is the combination lock to the riches I had been seeking. And it was the art of copywriting. That's what was making it work. So yeah, I got excited. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's a, some, sounds like a magical, magical moment at that, that time. when you I remember that moment right now. Awesome. Um, and what would you say are the biggest barriers for newbies obviously we've got a community of a lot of our right some of our writers have you know have done a bit of copywriting before a lot of them are brand new complete newbies what do you think are the biggest barriers to to succeeding as a copywriter well the biggest one is thinking they know what it's all about it's the assumption of skill it's not there copywriting is amazingly difficult it's very, very challenging because you have psychology, you have persuasion, you have the craft of writing and probably some other dark elements that are woven into this. And it's really easy for people to assume, oh, I know how to write, so I'm yeah. just gonna be a copywriter. 
And it's that ego, that ego that gets in the way. So the biggest issue here is not really respecting the craft. There's an art and science to copywriting. And if people don't take the time to learn it, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm 67 years old. I'm still learning. I'm still reading. I'm still diving in to unravel any hacks, any shortcuts, any new insights, any psychology I might have missed or maybe can still use. So the beginners really need to respect the craft and then really start learning it, putting in the 10,000 hours or more, whatever it takes to, to master copyright. Yeah, you know what, I feel that marketers, so many marketers out there don't respect it, or just people in business in general, right. still this one part of the marketing kind of puzzle that because people can write, they have the ability to write English, for example, they think, oh, I'll do that. And we still speak to so many marketing managers that they decide, oh, I'm going to, yeah, no, I'll, I'm doing the copy. Not really, you know, they'll get a designer, they'll get a developer, but for some reason they t try to take that on and they don't respect the, the art and the, and the science of it all. I remind people that copywriting is a stranger writing to a stranger to ask them to pay for something in advance, usually for a product or service they don't even know is going to work for them. It is one of the most challenging things ever. So I say you really have to respect it. And if somebody is really on an ego kick and, and think there's nothing to it, I would say, go ahead and try. Go ahead and write some sales letters, send them out, and then give me back the feedback on how you did. It's yeah, see, if, see if those checks turn up at your, your right. doorstep. Right. Can I ask you a question on that note? Do you think that um, newbies that want to want to master copywriting who don't, have the natural knack for writing? Do you think they can master? Do you think you need to have that natural ability and then to really hone it? Do you think it's possible for people to, to, to learn even though they're not great writers? That's a great question. I absolutely believe you can learn it. Absolutely believe it. None of us are born writing. We're learning how to write from day one, whenever the first grades are in the US or in London or anywhere in the world. Whenever they start teaching people the alphabet, teaching people how to string together word, we're all learning how to write. Yeah. Learning how to copyright is an extension of all of that. There is much more to it, but it's like saying I went to graduates, I went to grade school and I learned how to do cursor. I could write in pencil and write my name. Then I went to junior high and I learned how to write a short story. Or I went to uh, high school or college and I learned how to write a dissertation. Well, the next step is, okay, go to copywriting school now and learn how to write with a sales goal in mind. I believe you can learn that. And there's little shortcuts and hacks, and maybe we can talk about a couple of them as we go through here, but I believe we can all learn it. Definitely, yeah, no, really, really good point. And the shortcuts and hacks we will definitely get to, um, as I think our, our, our community would, would love to get those, those nuggets from you. Right. Um, any other advice <laughs> for, you know, those starting out, we've kind of talked about the main barrier, any other kind of, you know, from a seasoned expert, thinking back to when you started, is there anything you would say? Do absolutely, absolutely. God, I can get on a soapbox because I love copywriting so much and I know what <laughs> I went through to, to get to whatever level I'm at at this point and I'm still growing. I would say the number one, if not number two thing is read every fricking book ever written on copyright. I don't care if it was in the 1800s. You find those books and you work your way through those books. Read the classics. And I have a handful of books I recommend some people should have heard of if they're interested in copywriting and some they probably never heard of. But I am a book freak. I'm a book addict. When it comes to learning something, I go back to when it started. I have books from the 1800s, the early 1900s. Of course, the new books that are coming out, I still grab them. I still devour them. I don't think anybody that wants to be a great copywriter can actually succeed unless they have learned from the historic greats. Mm -hmm. And most of those historic greats wrote books. And a lot of their, their thinking about copywriting is there. But I would also look at psychology. There is a psychology to selling. And I wouldn't just look at books on selling or the psychology of selling. I would look at actual psychology. 
to understand how the mind works. Um, I'm still learning about writing and I still love learning about writing because to me it's so fascinating that we only have the 26 letters in the alphabet depending on what language we have here but depending on how I weave those words together I can make somebody cry I can make yeah. somebody laugh I can make somebody buy and it's like how do you do that that is an art and a science to writing that I think I'm still learning and I think everybody that's interested in copywriting needs to learn so read, read, read. Anybody who wants to write needs to be reading anyway. It's going to train their mind how to think like a writer. You're going to pick up unconsciously some patterns, some flow, some, um, some un unthought about things will be taken in on a subtle level, and it'll become part of who they are. But the big one for me is read. You cannot, if a person comes to me and says they're a copywriter, and I ask what books they read, and they read one or two, they're out the door. I'm not going to hire that person. They don't know anything about copywriting. Mm. I think it's, it's interesting that, you know, obviously our, our community, we've, we've launched a course and a, a course, Kickstart the Course Bundle, um, and there's a lot of text, right? We've got some intro videos, but it's a lot of text. And then we've had, a, you know, a couple of people sort of wanting to, to, to opt out, essentially, because they said, oh, it's all... I thought it was going to be a bunch of videos. I tried to explain, well, you know, I, I didn't want to have to read, you know, and we sort of thought, you don't want to have to read, but you, you, you want to be able to be become a copywriter. You're going to have to, the way that it's written. And anyone that spent time in the course who were, were expecting videos suddenly realized, oh, this is actually nice to read. I'm enjoying this. This is going in. And part is you're, you know, you're, you're learning through kind of osmosis as well as, learning through the tips that are written there you know if it's written in that style you can pick up as you see the flow and and, and well, you know Con conrad there's something i think that's interesting that's worth mentioning here i don't know if people know my my reputation but you know i was in the movie the secret i've written 80 some books i travel around the world as a speaker i've been to countries i didn't even know existed long ago i've been on television major media larry king and a bunch of other ones um, interviewed all the time, not always on copywriting, rarely on copywriting, but on lots of other subjects. And here's why I'm bringing all this up. Copywriting has been my secret to success. Mm. Copywriting. It's the ability to use words with some sort of conscious control that I've applied to being in movies, to being on stage, to being interviewed, as well as in my books. People can pick up any of my books and again, I've, I've written dozens of them, and they'll see that they were written by a copywriter because the copywriting method has given me a way to grab attention, hold attention, and usually compel people to do something, if only to think in a different way. Yeah. So when people say they don't want to watch videos, I'm thinking to myself, do you realize those are words? Yeah, exactly. That those are also stemming back to the, to the control of language. Mm -hmm. which is what copywriting is all about. So anybody that is uh, unsubscribing because they don't want to watch videos should unsubscribe. Get the hell out of the copywriting school. <laughs> you don't belong there. Go watch YouTube or something, you know? I'm glad you're on our side. <laughs> oh, come on, absolutely. So I think that was a, perhaps a nice segue to my next question, which is about the book that I mentioned, uh, Hypnotic Writing, which was... Yeah. You know, a book I read first <clears throat> 10 years ago and, and, and loved, and, and I learned a lot of skills from that very book. Um, what is hypnotic writing? So, you know, what, what's it all about? Yeah, thank you. Coin the term Boy, yourself, right? It's your term. So, what is it? Yeah, I coined the term. <sighs> I coined it because I was reading in two different areas. I was reading literature, which I don't read that much anymore these days, but I was reading fiction. And I would read these stories and I would wonder, how is the author making me feel so much? I'm just reading a fictional story about some character going through some challenge, and yet my breathing might get shallow because I'm excited. Or I might raise my shoulders because I'm getting tense. Or I might laugh or I might cry or I might chuckle or who knows. But it's all happening because this author pulled my strings. Mm. And I thought, how did the author do that in literature? So I was fascinated with that. And then on the other side, I've been a hypnotist since I was 
about 18 years old. So I've got decades of experience in that. Certified hypnotist, spoke at the hypnosis conventions, no hypnotist, practice hypnosis and so forth. And I was fascinated with the aspect of grabbing attention and holding it and influencing it, which is what hypnosis helps do. Mm. And there's something in hypnosis called the waking trance. Most people have heard about trances, you know, you close your eyes and you come back to 10 or whatever the hypnotist did, or you saw a stage hypnotist do something along those lines. But a waking hip, hypnotic state is where your eyes are open, but you're in a trance. And that often happens, most people would identify when they're driving and they've been lost in thought, maybe it's late at night and they just keep driving and they're in hip, highway hypnosis. Yeah. They're in a waking trance. Obviously, their eyes are open because they got to steer the car, but they're steering unconsciously. And it was the fascinating, the fascination with both those areas. How does a literary great pull our emotional buttons or push our emotional buttons? And how do hip, hypnotists get us to listen, stay focused, and act? Mm. And I put both of those together. I put both of those together and combined them and called them hypnotic writing. And way back in Houston in the mid 1990s, I was teaching hypnotic writing classes for adults. It was an experiment. There were adult education classes back then and for 30 bucks, somebody could take a class that lasted one night or a few weeks. I don't remember how long hypnotic writing lasted as a class, but I created a, a, a manual because I had also heard that I could make money selling books in the back of the room. I needed a book. So I wrote hypnotic writing. I tested hypnotic writing to that group. I bound it and sold it to those people in the back. Hypnotic writing also ended up being my very first ebook. Way back uh, decades ago in the late 1990s, Mark Joyner, who was virtually unknown at the time, kept telling me about ebooks. And he says, Joe, I'm a fan of yours. I believe in you. Give me anything and I will promote it as an ebook. Mm. I said, no, for two years. <laughs> Nobody knew what ebooks were, and I thought, who's going to buy an ebook? Yeah. Well, when I finally gave it to him and he sold it, it, it broke records overnight. And I realized that I was on to something, that people really wanted this new way of looking at copyright. So, in short, a hypnotic writer, which is what I would call myself, is basically using a lot of story technique. Because in fiction and in literature, there's, there's stories. You're reading it because there's a story that's unfolding that you are engaged with. So that aspect of hypnotic writing is there. But there's also the aspect of holding attention, which comes from traditional copywriting. If you don't grab attention and hold attention, nobody's going to listen to your argument and you're not going to make any sales. So the combination of hypnotic writing is what that's all about. Fiction plus hypnosis, plus a little cell psychology equals hypnotic writing. Awesome. Um, I'm probably going to jump ahead to a question I was planning for later, but that's how my okay. book works. Um, I talk about balance because you talked about a few different elements there. <clears throat> the thing that um, we found with some, some of our new learners, for example, is that they pick up a few tricks, um, you know, you copyright sales psychology tricks, for example. And one thing I've noticed is them going overboard, right? And it, it, they sound like a, a car salesman. You know, it's like, oh, here's a trick. Here's, here's that sense of urgency. Let's throw that in. And, you know, it's kind of all coupled together. And then the end formula there is, is especially these days when you're, you know, there's more, people are hit with more and more and more ads um, from all kinds of different medium, all kinds of different angles. So that I suppose they're more immune to that sort of messaging how would you mm. recommend getting that balance right of these different techniques you know dan kennedy who also deeply influenced me and, and has written lots of books on marketing and wrote a great sell, uh, book on sales letter i think it was called the ultimate sales letter uh dan kennedy is still around still doing copywriting and he often said that what you need to focus on is having door-to-door -door selling now, I know today, especially, you know, depending on what's going on in the world, going door to door isn't really possible and probably isn't practical. But there is a lesson there that we all need to have. And I got door to door selling. I had telephone selling, direct selling, all of that where you pick up the phone or you knock on somebody's door and you end up talking to them. And when you have that kind of practical experience, 
you learn you cannot be a car salesman. They will hang up on you. They will slam the door in front of you because you will come across as, as an insincere clown. Yeah. So what I advise people is, first of all, you should only be promoting something you believe in. If you are asked to promote a product or service that you really don't believe is, is works, what the hell are you taking a job for? Mm. It's unethical. It's not true to your own life morals and values. I believe that you're going to be a far better copywriter if, A, you are writing copy for something you truly believe in. Yeah. The story I told about going to the post office and getting those checks for that software program, I love that software program. I used that software program. Yeah. So when I said this works, people believed me and I didn't have to go over the top. Going over the top is a sign of being an amateur. It's also a sign that you don't really believe in what you're selling because you're kind of using a mega horn and screaming mm -hmm. into somebody's ears to pay attention. It's far wiser to come from what I'm sometimes using the phrase, logically emotional, logically emotional. Yeah. We learn in sales psychology and most copywriters learn at some time that people buy for emotional reasons, but they justify with logic. Most of the time they're buying something because they're really excited. Something in their heart is resonating with it. And so they want to buy because they're excited. But then they got to go rationalize it. Maybe they have to tell their wife or their husband or their accountant, here's why I spent the money on this. And so they need logical reasons. That balance of both being logically emotional in a sales letter is what will help people be more level-headed. I think really screaming, going over the top, is showing you don't know your material, you don't know how to sell your material, you haven't actually shown that you believe in your material, because when you have that sincerity and you have that skill, there's a certain natural quality that will be in your copy. It'll guide your copy and the reader will pick up on it. They will pick up on sincerity. So that's a lot of material. So I hope that helps. Yeah, answer. no, that's really, really good. I've got a, a, a couple of points off the back of that. I think that okay. there's this little exercise that we actually have asked our new learners to do really early on before they've even learned any of the kind of copywriting formulas and tricks and tips that we, that we offer them. And it's, and it's just write to a friend, try and try and tell yes. a friend about this thing you've just bought and and this is the thing we noticed that some of the, our learners were jumping in jumping the gun and they'd obviously heard about some copyright tricks and, and and tried to make it a sales letter and we had to say hold up we didn't ask you to do that we said don't you just think of the last thing that you bought that you really like and tell your friend about it because we naturally do that that's a normal natural scenario right. sending a message out oh hey mate you know you you you, you, you never guess what, you really love this. You know, there's, there's things that we naturally do in life that we've picked up as social creatures um, and try and bring that element in. I think it's a good exercise to do to try and get the sales psychology out of your head, you know, use that and then structure it and then, you know, sprinkle the, the magic in. Um, and, and I love that exercise and I endorse it and I've done it. And I'll give you an add on to it. Another way of doing it is to actually pick up the phone and call a friend of yours and yes. tell them about the product or service, or it could be the latest movie you saw or the latest book you read, or it could be about this interview, and record it, and record it. Yes. Transcribe the recording. You can go to rev.com, rev.com, and I think they're $1.25 a minute. So depending on how long your call was, it, it could be 10 bucks, 10 US dollars or something or less. And because what happens, and this is a technique I learned from Gary Halbert, who was another influence in copywriting, and he's gone now, but he influenced a lot of people who wanted to be copywriting uh, geniuses, and he wrote quite a few little books that have helped people. I believe they're all on Amazon. I believe they're still worth reading. And he would say, call up somebody and tell them about what you're trying to sell and record mm. what you're doing because in your natural speech for something you love, which could be a movie, could be the book, could be the product, you will inadvertently, unconsciously practice some pretty good copywriting. Yeah. If you transcribe it, then you can review it to learn where you naturally said a few things that were pretty cool. Like for example, you and I didn't talk before this interview. 
I had a sense of where we were going to go and I knew what the topic was. Mm. When you asked me early on about where I got started with copywriting, I did not know I was going to tell the story about writing that sales letter for the writing copy and going to the post office right. and turning the key. But that ended up being pretty good. That's perfect. If I wanted, perfect. Yeah. Yes. But it happened naturally. And that's my point. It happened naturally out of my own sincerity. It's not a made up story. That's from my life. And I'm obviously enthusiastic about it. And it came out of a conversation with you. So if at some point we transcribe this, we can pull that story out and use it to maybe sell this particular interview. Yeah. So I'm saying I love what you're talking about there and calling a friend, talking to a friend, recording the call is another way to learn good copy. You know what, uh, Joe, I actually, uh, you know, I remember first reading about the self editor in your book, you know, trying to avoid that. I have to transcribe. I can't do it. Like I have to, I have to talk because I just, I could never, I because I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist, and I I can't help just jumping back to the beginning of the sentence. If right. I, I'll always do it. I'll be like, if I pause for a second, I go, let me read. You just completely and froze. It, and, I, and it stifles the, the the process. You are froze, Conrad. I don't know if you're. Oh, yeah. uh, can you? Have you got? You're back. You're back. back. You're yeah. back. All right. So yeah, are you it's real folks. You froze for me and I froze for you, but I think we're good. Okay, well, good. That's a, that's, you know what freezing does? Freezing grabs attention and holds it. I would leave it in this interview because yes. when people are reading, they're going to come to the frozen part and they're going to wonder, what, what are they saying? <laughs> they're going to lean forward. Is it going to come back? Are they okay? Is Dr. Joe coming back? Is Conrad coming back? <laughs> and then we can explain that there is, for example, on stage, a pause is one of the most hypnotic things you can do because you're talking and everybody's listening to you, but all of a sudden you go, yeah. And they all lean forward. It's like, oh, what happened? What you got to say? So you can do that in, in copy with a variety of techniques, but I would leave it as an example. I love, how you're, I love how you're selling the uh, tech problem that we had. <laughs> Perfect. Well, this is, it's turning it into something good. You know, I have a self-help side and I wrote books like The Attractor Factor where I say when something's going on in your life that's not particularly great, turn it into something good. Yeah. Copywriters should be pretty creative people. So yeah, I'm yeah. saying, hey, the screen froze. Let's turn it into something good. It was a good I, thing that it froze. I think it's a great point. Like I was even, I, was, I did a webinar this week. We've been doing a, a, a bit of work on... Uh, Communicating in a crisis because of the current situation. The webinar with with one of the banks over here with their audience. And, you know, I talked about admitting weakness. You know, there are all these uh, companies yes. right now. Everyone's suffering. Be honest about it. Tell your community. Tell your followers. We're yes. struggling with this, and it and it, it it turns the negative into a positive. Don't say we're on top of everything. We're not affected. We know how to solve coronavirus because you don't. It comes across as ingenuine, and and it it breaks trust rather than builds it. That is a fantastic point. It's actually one of the things I, I would teach people that want to learn copywriting is to be totally sincere, which is, seems to be a reoccurring theme in this interview here. I keep talking about that mm. because when we talk to somebody about something, we are selling them in a sense, we don't even think we're selling them. We're just saying, Hey, I saw a great movie the other day. Um, I'll give you an example. I saw the movie Molly's game. And Molly's Game is a true story about a woman who ran an illegal poker, uh, poker gambling game. And I didn't know anything about the movie, started watching it, and it was absolutely riveted. True story, well done, engaging, fantastic dialogue. And so as I'm telling you this, I am selling you on the movie, but I'm not doing it with that conscious intent. That's my enthusiasm. It's like, man, I saw a great movie. But yeah. here's the thing. Even when we do that, we always find something to bitch about. Meaning, I saw the movie Molly's Game, and you know what? They talk too fast. That was my only complaint about this movie. Kevin Costner's in it, and he kind of mumbles a little bit. I didn't like that. But for the most part, man, that movie was great. I'd watch it again, and maybe I need to watch it again because they freaking talk too fast in certain parts of the movie. Mm. So what did I just do? I showed my enthusiasm. I talked about the movie, which is I'm selling, and I admitted a weakness that I saw in it. We do this for everything. 
if we go to a great restaurant, we'll say something like, oh, they had the best Persian food ever. However, I couldn't understand the menu because it was in Farsi and I'd have to look at the picture and try to figure out what the item was. But yeah. once I ordered it, it was fantastic. We do this with everything. So when we write our copy, we want to make sure we insert our weakness. I actually did that with the software program from the 1990s. I said, this is an incredible program. This program will help you be a better writer and better speaker, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the only problem is it only works on a PC. Mm. There was a weakness. Don't be afraid to admit the weakness in copy. Yeah. It's such a great point. And I think a good segue to focus on, let's say a few more, admitting a weakness is, 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 a, is a trick, let's say that you can, yes. uh, I, don't, I don't know if calling it a trick is, is the right word, but it's a technique you can use. Yes. To create hypnotic copy, to create copy that sells, copy that persuades. What other, and I know I've asked you this before when we've talked about hypnotic blogging in the past, but when it comes to, let's say a sales letter or a landing page, um, that piece of copy that you need to persuade someone. If you had to choose your top five hypnotic copywriting techniques, what would they be? <laughs> well, well, hands down, uh, the headline. The headline, that headline, that's the make it or break it point. And that headline doesn't grab people, hold people, compel people, interest people, and get them interested in the next sentence. You failed. Yeah. So the headline is the most important thing. And just because I say headline, I don't want beginner copywriters to go, well, I put a headline there. It's not just words. It is the intelligent structure of those words that needs to compel people to want to know more. So one of my favorite techniques is to ask a question, but not a yes, no question. Because if I said, um, I don't know. Do you, do you believe it's going to rain today? If they say yes or no, there's no reason to keep reading. Yeah. They answered yes or no and they're done. I like an open ended question um, that would engage them. In other words, do one of the most famous headlines in history is, uh, do you make these mistakes in English? And there were the list of mistakes. Well, that led people, the headline led people right into the beginning of the ad. And then the ad, of mm. course, it needs to take them to a sense of action. So I like, uh, first, we need to have a headline. Second, I like to have a question headline. Third, I like the question to be open-ended. Yes, no, stops the, the flow. Yeah. Little trick that I do is I often will put quotation marks around the headline because quotation marks signify there's some sort of life, there's some sort of dialogue, and you can get 10, 15% or even more readership from doing that. That would be the first thing I would say. Now, that's all about just the headline. Yeah. The, next thing I would say, <laughs> right, the next thing I would say is tell a story. Tell a story. Some of the greatest copywriters in history all focused on stories. One of the copywriters that most influenced me was Robert Collier. He wrote the Robert Collier letter book, and most people don't know that he was a metaphysical author. In my life, when I was in my teenage years, I was reading his metaphysical books, and it wasn't until 20 years later that I found out he wrote the Robert Collier letter book, and he was a direct male genius. Mm. And when I looked at his books, whether they were the metaphysical or the Robert Collier book, he also published a magazine called Mind Incorporated, and I found some old issues, and I would read those. I was... Talk about hypnotic writing. If there was a hypnotic writer before me, it was Robert Collier. And his secret was to tell a story. He would focus on an individual. And the individual had to do something. And there's usually a challenge of some sort that the reader gets engaged in because you want the reader to identify with whoever is being talked about in the story. So mm. the second element that I would have in here is having a story to engage people. And the third element that I would have in here is proof, proof. There needs to be those testimonials. Dan Kennedy said, have a preponderance of proof, mm. which is a term taken from attorneys, which just means overwhelm people with the evidence that other people have used it. And it doesn't matter if you put 150 testimonials there, because you don't care if they read them, you care that they see them. Yeah. And by seeing the overwhelming evidence, they unconsciously conclude, holy shit, this stuff must actually work. Mm. This product or service actually works. 
The next thing that I would focus on, and I got this from Eugene Swartz, who wrote Breakthrough Advertising. Eugene Swartz said, a copywriter is the script writer of your prospect's dreams. Nice. Oh, I love that. You're the script writer of your prospect's dreams. Think about what that reader wants and then paint the picture, probably through a story, of what their life will be like when they have their dream come true. Mm. I just love this. Be the script writer of your prospect's dreams. And I don't know, was that number four? I would say number five is some sort of takeaway, uh, which means scarcity, the price is gonna change today, you have bonuses you're gonna give them today. It's what Jay Abraham always called the ethical bribe. Uh, if they act today, you're going to give them stuff. It's an ethical bribe. Um, but you got to take it away. If they don't do it today, they're not going to get the ethical bribe. Life is never going to change for them. Uh, the money, the, the cost of this is going to go up. Some sort of slap. Some yeah. sort of little... A sense of urgency. and Yeah, yeah that right. sense of urgency, the sense of scarcity, all of that. So I think those are five things. I'm just Perfect. Yeah, a lot. So it's perfect. Uh, lots of nuggets of gold there in that little section <laughs> um, um, um so on the flip side um what would you say most companies get wrong about you know when it comes to their copy because we've talked about the fact that lots of marketers decide to take it upon themselves to write the content to write the copy um i, th I think that i'm not sure what percentage of brands actually use copywriters but not enough in my in my book so you know what do you think they get wrong most of the time <laughs> well, I'm only laughing because it's such an epidemic. It's so easy to say. <laughs> it's, uh, it's focusing on themselves. It's we copy. Very often their copy is all about them. We started in such and such and we believe in you and we've got to do blah, blah, blah. It's, it's too we focused. In fact, one great little technique is just go through any copy that has we in it and change it all to you trying to change it so you can start thinking about what does the reader get? What does the prospect, the potential customer get? Instead of who am I? Because nobody really cares who you are. They care about what you can do for them. So the big fundamental mistake is working, uh, coming from the we personality, which means they're coming from their ego. You know, because you read my book, Hypnotic Writing, that one of my famous phrases is, get out of your ego and mm -hmm. into your prospect's ego. It's one of the biggest takeaways from this interview even. Get out of your ego. Quit talking about yourself. Quit selling yourself. Quit being focused on yourself. Quit thinking of yourself. Quit dreaming about the money you're going to get from the sales from doing this. Get out of yourself and focus on what do they get? What's in it for them? How will their life be better? How will you solve their problems? How will they sleep better at night? How will they make more money? What is in it for them? Most I, businesses are crippled on that one. Go ahead. Can sorry. I ask, on the, on, off the back of that, have you got any tips for trying to get into the, the, the mind of the prospect? Because obviously as a copywriter, you know, we have to write copy for all kinds of different brands, selling different, yeah. different services, different audiences. How do we go as one human sitting here and how do I put my mind into the mind of, of, of the prospect? That's a great question. Research, yeah. research. You have to go and look. If you're hired by a company, you have to go and look at their data. You have to find out, have you done surveys? Have you got the demographics on this? Do you know who your ideal customer is? For example, in my world, for my followers, if you will, my mailing list, if you will, we have figured out that the average customer is a woman, a single, previously married, two kids usually, between the ages of 45 and 60. That's my fan base, and which is a cool fan base to have. Uh, they have money, they are deeply in love usually, and they are followers of all my work and, and love my books and stories and all of that. That'd be in my case. If you were being hired by a company, I would say, turn over your data here. I need to find out who the customer is, the average customer, the demographics, your demographics, your database. And if you really want to excel as a copywriter, call some of those people yes. and talk to them about buying the product or service. Why did you buy? Why did you delay in buying? What do you like best? What do you like least? Looking for the weakness, of course, as well. 
And if you really want to be the, the greatest of greatest, go visit a handful of them. Go visit a handful of them in person. Of course, ask for when we're When we're out of lockdown, yeah. <laughs> yes, we, of course, when, when life has changed and we're allowed out of our <laughs> nest. But even right now, assuming that, I, I don't know when this interview goes out, but as we're making this interview, we are under the coronavirus. There is a pandemic. We're being asked to stay at home. That's actually, okay. so what, to copywriters? Because most of us work at home. We got internet access, we have phones, we can do pretty much anything that we need to do right here. And if we get hungry, there's a lot of places that'll drive the food right to us and bring it to us. So there's no excuse not to do this work. Yeah. But the bottom line is research. And I'm gonna give you one more tip here, or one more reason to do the research. In that research, you will often uncover the gem that you'll use for copy. It'll come out of some documentation or a conversation with a customer that they'll just say inadvertently or somebody had written in a, in a business presentation unconsciously and you'll go, oh, oh, that's the that copy. That's the copy. But you won't know it if you don't do the work. So don't be what I call a psychic copywriter where you sit there and go, well, I imagine that they'll buy for this reason. You mm. can't know that. Yeah. You have to do the legwork, you have to do the research, and maybe your intuition will guide the way afterwards, but you've got to feed the intuition with the facts. I think that's great, and we, as an agency, we, you know, we, we always try to encourage our brands or allow them to allow us to do buyer interviews and or, and or send surveys out and try to gather that voice of customer data. And you know, sometimes I say that, not only can it be the gem you find, it might be the exact wording, right? Sometimes exactly. it's, it's, they've said right. so perfectly. So like, why would I change that? You know, my job as a copywriter, you know, I couldn't say it because you know it's going to resonate because it's come from the mouths of the very people you're trying to sell to. That's exactly right. You've got to be a great listener because they will very often tell you your sales letter. That's it. Yeah. Our job is done, right? Just get the prospect <laughs> coming right. for us. And, um, Joe, it's been really, really amazing talking to you. I love how enthusiastic you are about copywriting. I feel, I feel enthused. I was feeling <laughs> a, bit, a bit tired to that today, and now I'm like full of energy. So it's a, oh, good, good, great. It's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for all of these, all these gems, all these nuggets of wisdom. Um, of course, as I said, we're going to encourage our community to to get your hypnotic writing book as an extra resource. Is there any? else you think that will help them anything you want to plug <laughs> well um I, I mentioned earlier i'm a book freak i'm a book addict so there's lots of books on copywriting not by me yeah i would recommend reading my book hypnotic writing i am very proud of hypnotic writing and i also know more people learned how to write or get past their writing blocks because of that book than any other book yeah. uh, i would also recommend people read the robert collier letter book I was a good writer before and I was a hypnotic writer after it. The Robert Collier letter book. I would read, there's a book called The, the Science of Storytelling by Will Storr, S-T-O-R-R, -R, The Science of Storytelling. I would read that. There is a book that deeply influenced me in understanding what the hot buttons are in people. And it was called The Magic Power of Emotional Appeal by Roy Garn, G-A-R-N. The Magic Power of Emotional Appeal. Uh, there's all kinds of other books I can be talking about. Hypnotic Writing by me. I do have another book called Buying Trances that would probably be of interest to your folks because mm. Buying Trances is really about, about putting people into that, that waking trance where they might buy. So Buying Trances, Hypnotic Writing, Robert Collier Letter Book, anything by Dan Kennedy, anything by John Caples, uh, read David Ogilvy's famous book, Confessions of an yes. Ad Man. Um, God, I can go on. Yeah, I feel like I could talk to you for hours, but uh, yeah, this is fun. This you is ask fun. Great and, questions, and, Robert. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it so much. Honestly, like, uh, uh, it's amazing catching up with you, not in well, al almost in person, right? Because it's, right. it's just been via email. So, again, I really, really appreciate it, and I'm sure our community will learn a ton from this and uh, we'll also share some, we'll chop some bits up and share them on LinkedIn as well. So 
across our social media channels. So again, thanks again, Joe. Um, stay safe, stay sane, uh, and, and we'll catch up soon. All right. Thank you. Godspeed to you and everybody watching. Thanks. Later. So much.